Yes. <laughs> So we have Rachel Carter here, and she is playing the Sapphire Steel deck. And then Stephen Whitcomb on the right is playing Amber Steel. I th I th oh, they might be the I opposite. Think it's I do see a Ford Sphere. I think it's the opposite. Ah, okay. Um, but it's okay. Uh, we're now going to see them. So I love seeing them you know, alter their hands here. Let's, it gives you an idea of, um, you know, whether that player is, what kind of strategy they're going to pursue, what, whether they're happy with their opening hand. Um, and you can see Rachel's waiting for Steven to decide. Steven choosing five cards, um, clearly looking for something in the opening. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, I think there was some Sapphire cards I saw over there on Steven's side. And I know we've talked about it before, but this altering your opening hand is such a key part of playing Disney or Arcana. And in fact, when I first started playing, I did not even realize how important that was to setting yourself up for success. Uh, that's true. I mean, games are won or lost on the altar. Um, how well you manage to find those cards that you want, whether you throw away cards and draw no inkables, there's such an art to it. Um, and so it's, I mean, the first part of the game, but it's one of the most crucial parts of this game. You know what's really fun, Liam? What's that? Is playing an Enchanted Cinderella in turn one. <laughs> That's true. just to have it immediately yes. cannoned. Yes, just to um, have it immediately say goodbye. That dream was uh, not a wish that her heart made. That's true. So Stephen here, choosing not to let that stick around, had a choice to run a, uh, play a Ford Sphere instead to set up that item, but instead choosing to get rid of that Cinderella uh, with her singer ability. Uh, fire the cannons, a fun card to be run here. Sometimes you see them in decks, sometimes you don't. Depends mm -hmm. on if people choose to run the uninkable boo boom instead. Uh, but here, fire the cannons doing work on turn one, followed immediately by a Smee. Yes, and Smee, as we've talked about, is such a strong card coming down on turn two, questing for two, a 3-3 three, three character, and it does have that little bit of disadvantage of taking damage at the end of the turn if you don't have a captain, but honestly, it's, it's not much of a disadvantage because you can still get tons of value out of Smee um, if you can stay on the board. So, oh, and we have a Smee for Smee. I see your Smee and raise you a Smee. A Smee mirror, as it were. <laughs> uh, no, great card, very well statted, and that two lore is, is very impressive on turn two. Um, it also, you know, some people overlook sometimes that it is, it can sing as well. Um, the uh, the Amber uh, Bare Necessities um, is also a card that sometimes run in this deck, and there it is. Uh, it can be sung by Smee. Yes. Um, but in this case, it looks like it's being played by Ink. Uh, Rachel getting to look at the hand here and pick a non-character card to discard. Uh, we took a, we took away Flavisham snacks. <laughs> yeah, Bare Necessities, uh, this came out in set three, I believe, and it was one of my favorite new song cards of the game. It's uh, such a fun art piece as well with Baloo there singing with his, with his fruit, and it just it can be such a powerful card. Yeah, so then we have a, a harp coming down here on uh, Rachel's side of the board. Uh, so some of these Steel Song decks uh, in this meta started to run a little bit more aggressive lines with cards like uh, the Magic Heart or the Golden Harp, um, the Piglet, which gains two lore mm. if there's two other characters on the board, um, Smee with, with its two lore. Um, and so where Steel Song decks sometimes can be a little bit more mid rangey trying to build up their singers um, and then take control of the board in the mid-game with a lot of songs, sometimes there are more aggressive builds where players can play these... these uh, large number of two lore characters early and it seems like that's one of the builds that Rachel is on here. Yeah, which is really fun to see. I, I like, and we've talked about this before, is how you s are starting to see a little bit more variance, you know. So there's so many different, you know, tweaks that players can make to an ink pairing. So Steel Song doesn't look just one way. You can have a lot of different variations. And that Golden Harp, I've seen games one <laughs> with, with that that card on board. Yeah, and unfortunately for Steven, Steven has seen the harp now. He knows that um, that this is an aggressive deck and it's going to be looking to pick up lore early. And Steven is not on his ideal draw here. Oh. Um, oh, and here we have uh, I Let the Storm Rage On being played mm -hmm. uh, with ink on Smee. Uh, that not only lets Rachel draw a card, but it also puts two damage on Smee. So now Smee, if exerted, um, is going to banish himself on his turn. Uh, still able to do some challenging, though, and that might be what we see here. Yeah, and I... <laughs> I really love this from Rachel because it, she's able to also keep that golden harp on board by playing that song. So she's able to quest here for two, four and really take the lore lead here early. 
Yeah, and that's something she's going to be looking to do. She knows that the longer this game goes, if we get into the end game, um, the inevitability is with Steven's uh, Steel Song deck. Or, I'm sorry, not Steel Song deck, but Sapphire Steel deck. We've seen uh, if this deck gets going and it builds the engine it wants to, that it can gain you know, 10, 15, 20 lore in mm -hmm. a single turn. Yes. Um, and so Rachel's looking to get as much lore as possible, perhaps uh, then able to close the game out with flutes before Steven's able to set up that end game engine. Um, Steven here, though, knowing that, that Rachel's going to be looking to pick up Lord Trading to Smee um, and uh, passing it back to Rachel for her turn. Yeah. I'm sure that Rachel is hoping to see some of her other singers, like an Ariel, get some more songs in hand. Ah, speaking of which, <laughs> <laughs> there is our lovely Ariel, spectacular singer. And did you know that part of your world was almost cut from the movie? I didn't. Yes. <laughs> so glad to see you Me too. And we have another shiny card. I love these enchanted. That was uh, Along Came Zeus that uh, she was able to pick up with Ariel's ability. Um, of course, Ariel allows you to look at the top four cards of your deck, and you can find a song card and add it to your hand. And speaking of aggressive decks... There's that piglet we mentioned yes. earlier. This piglet gets an additional uh, two lore, up to th a total of three, if you have two other characters in play. Um, however, you did see that harp go into the, into the discard pile there, and that's because uh, the golden harp, although it's very well statted for its cost, um, has an ability that says if you don't play a song on your turn, you have to banish it to the end of your turn. So off to the discard pile, pilot goes, um, and unfortunately that won't allow Piglet to get that three lore, but it's a simple matter of playing another character for it to be a three lore character again. Yeah, it looks like Rachel only has one card left in hand. Um, now, in a Steel Song deck, what is the, where is the place that a player would be able to draw more cards? What is she looking for? I mean, really, it's a whole new world is, yeah. is the big one you're looking for, especially with Ariel being able to sing it. Um, that's a position you want to be in. Of course, Rachel has seen, you know, Steven over there and knows that uh, Steven's not on his ideal draw either, so there's always the risk of drawing your opponent into, you know, the ideal cards that they need. But um, Rachel here would, I think, would probably like to refill her hand. Removing that beast tragic hero is is definitely, definitely key to keep Steven from drawing into what he needs. But Ooh, another Ariel. This is a fantastic card. I This was set four, if I'm correct. And Ariel, uh, item collector, treasure collector. Yes. <laughs> she has ward. She quests for three. And if you have more items on your side of the board than your opponent, she gets an additional two lore. A really fabulous character. Yeah, now Steven is way off of his game plan here, but um, playing this card on turn six is is not a terrible option. Mm -hmm. uh, Aerial Item Collector has an ability that says she gains an extra two lore if you have more items than your opponent. And in this Sapphire Steel deck, unless you're playing the Mirror mm -hmm. um, or the Ruby Sapphire deck, uh, more items than your opponent is oftentimes one. And in this case, Aerial is going to have five lore, and we see a second one coming yep. out, so that's <laughs> ten lore on the board with that Popsicle. My goodness. Steven, uh, you know, perhaps is able to take this game away with just these two characters, um, which is definitely not the game plan that we we see from these decks, and certainly not the one that Steven thought he no. was uh, playing into coming into this game. Uh, now we do see a piglet challenge into Ariel and Banish, which is <laughs> good for Rachel because I could just imagine, uh, imagine a lucky dime coming down and being, he would have been able to quest for 20 in one turn. <laughs> And here we have a Hades seven cost uninkable, which sends one of your opponent's characters into their inkwell uh, upon playing it. So Rachel with Lawrence there, which would have been the perfect answer or a great answer for Ariel uh, Treasure Collector when she is exerted, um, being removed. And now instead, Rachel probably digging at this point, mm -hmm. just throwing two damage out of Hades so with let the storm rage on. There we go. Uh, we have our Cinderella coming down again, singer and a little Robin Hood. At this point in the game, I'm not sure if that's what she wants to see, but she doesn't have much choice. She, like we've talked about, her hand is just so low, and she doesn't hasn't been able to find a whole new world to refill it. No, and at this point, Steven's starting to roll a little mm. bit, getting more resources on the board, uh, able to quest here for seven. seven. Mm -hmm. um, the Robin Hood is, is nice to have on the board because it does set up the Robin Hood shift if Rachel's able to draw into it, which would be a great answer for that Ariel. Um, but alone, these two are not going to be enough to deal with these two big threats. But that Ariel in particular is very, very dangerous with her five lore. Absolutely. Hades is also just a, such a fun card. His art, I know that he is a lot of people's favorite villain. Uh, what about, is it favorite villain, or do you have another? I mean, way, way up there. Up there. <laughs> Edwards does just such a good job bringing him to life. And Matthew Robert Davies with the art just killed it. It's amazing. It's so good. I, it makes me sad that Hades didn't get a song in the movie, Hercules. I, I really would have loved to hear a villain song from Hades. That's true. <laughs> Love that. 
add that to the list of, of yes. requests from Disney. Re yes, just submit that <laughs> to someone. <laughs> So Haiti is not only a, a great removal option, though, now that you mentioned it, but it, the stat line, that six in the stat line, brings it out of reach of a long came Zeus. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, that's one less card that able, Rachel was able to use to deal with Hades in one, one go. Yeah, this game has swung very quickly into Steven's favor. He has, one, two, three, five, seven lore on board, which would put him, yeah, just one lore away from taking the win. And I'm not sure that Rachel's going to be able to find the answers here that she needs. Otherwise, Stephen takes it next turn. No, and, that and she knows. <laughs> that Cogsworth clinches it there. I mean, yeah. the, the challenging thing with Ariel Item Collector is her ward. And yes. a lot of the removal... Yeah, what a fun game. What, what I loved about that game is it showed uh, the resiliency on the, on the part of Steven uh, having a, clearly not an ideal opening hand, but um, able to stay in the game long enough mm -hmm. in order to get to turn six when the aerials just became, you know, a real, a real menace. They, they really did, and when there were two of them on the board, that, that was a lot. Yeah, and I think here with Rachel's deck, like you were saying, last game... She does have some cards in here that can be a little bit more aggressive in the early game, and I think that that may be a key here for Rachel to gain lore early in the game. What do you think? No, I think that's right. This deck clearly wants to gain a lot of lore early. Um, we, I have not seen a queen, uh, the queen commanding presence, and so I don't know if that mm. if that is a shift line she's playing where she can whole new world on turn two. Mm -hmm. uh, in the absence of that, it seems like what this deck wants to do is start building up characters quickly, perhaps get a harp on the board. Um, Piglet. Piglet, mm -hmm. um, and then try to race ahead, and then later on you're using your flutes to close out the game uh, in the latter half. But um, it, this does seem to be a more aggressive deck. We do see a couple Piglets in the mm -hmm. opening hand. Yeah, Piglet is just such a fun card. Uh, actually, when I was in Chicago at the Disney Arcana Challenge in Chicago, I saw uh, a young Illuminar there who was doing a cosplay as a Piglet. It was really fun. That is super fun. So we have on Steven's side a couple popsicles. Well, we do have Whole New World this time around, so that's good. Yeah, what a fascinating hand here. Uh, so we have two Lucky Dimes in hand. Um, great card. You want them in the end game. You don't necessarily <laughs> no. want two of them in your hand in the early game. No. They're, they're going to be sitting there taking up space for a while. Uh, luckily, we do have uh, Mickey Mouse uh, Detective, which we'll see on turn three probably to ramp towards that seven ink. Mm -hmm. um, again, not an ideal hand, but we do have the early game cards we want, including uh, the Mickey Mouse Detective and a Smee, perhaps, if uh, Steven wants to answer a Smee with a Smee. But yep. we don't. Nope. <laughs> we want to ramp. We yep. want to ramp. Yep. We want to get, get as much ink into our ink wall as we can and get up to those larger characters. That's true. So uh, this Sapphire Steel deck, oftentimes, again, we think about as an engine builder. Um, but as we saw in the last game, there's a lot of high lore mid-game characters that this deck can use to kind of take over in the mid-game if you're not careful. And what makes that especially difficult for decks to deal with is cards like Cogsworth, which give your characters resist one. And we do see, I think, two of them in Steven's hand. Mm. So getting two of them on the board is just a lot for any damage-based removal deck to deal with. Yeah. Um, and that could allow Steven to take the game away here um, once he starts getting those on the board. Yeah, I do see he also has that Simbo, which we saw earlier today in another player's deck, but it's such a great card. And then over on Rachel's side, I spied a Rapunzel in her hand, which is really great because of that Smee that takes damage each turn. It kind of sets you up for a nice uh, play to bring Rapunzel in a couple turns later, heal Smee, keep him on the board a little bit longer to keep gaining lore. You also get the card draw off of Rapunzel's ability. So, uh, and Steven doesn't have anything that could take Smee out right now. So uh, having that Rapunzel there is going to be really nice for Rachel. It's, it is a fun little combo. And, mm -hmm. you know, oftentimes uh, people think about Rapunzel trying to maximize her value, uh, particularly in decks like Red Fossa, where you're trying to get three cards off of her draw. But in this case, you know, what this does is not only net her a card, but after that she'll be sitting with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven lore worth of characters mm -hmm. on the board, which is kind of the aggressive line I think this deck wants to take. Um, so perhaps we do see that play here, allowing Smee to stick around longer, um, and then getting that one, five uh, Rapunzel on the board. Yep. We see a Lawrence going into the inkwell. And uh, Smee is actually going to challenge in with, looks like they're trying to figure out what they want to do here. Yeah, so uh, let's see. So, oh, no, okay, so, so what happened here? This is fun. Um, Pooh, uh, Piglet uh, is Pooh Pirate Captain. 
Ah, um, that's right. So we yes, about, yeah. yes. So he uh, doesn't take any damage. Yeah, so that's so funny. <laughs> it's not a standard captain. Oh, this one. So, yeah, so Smee's ability says that if you don't have a captain on the board, he takes one damage at the end of the turn. And that's I think right. A lot of times in these Steel Song decks or these uh, Sapphire Steel decks, you're just so used to not having a captain that you forget. Yes, or you, a captain. or you have a standard, uh, a stereotypical to captain, like Captain Hook or John Silver. But, yeah, you can forget that. Piglet, Piglet is a captain there. Yeah. But we did still see Rapunzel. So Smee only had one damage on him instead of two. So Rapunzel got to draw one card off of Smee, still heal him up, still keep him on the board, which which is really nice. And also I want to point out that Rachel has that beautiful alternate art Rapunzel, which you can earn from the prize wall with tickets here at Disney Arcana Challenge. And I love that she has put it in her deck. It's such a beautiful card. I love the art on it. And so besides being just a fabulous card here in her deck, uh, really beautiful. That's, it is it is so gorgeous and um, yeah so fun fun interaction there uh, Smee you know healing one damage off the challenge to the Mickey and then Rapunzel coming down and healing and now the Tinkerbell coming down dealing one damage across the board uh, to Rachel's side of the board um, and Steven it here is just it, it's what we talked about earlier is setting up these you know these two lore characters which are going to be very difficult to remove mm -hmm. and Steven's just going to be able to quest for two four five six each turn unless Rachel's able to find some big body or yeah, just a big body to, to deal with him. Yeah. Steven's hand, he's been able to get some things off the top of his deck, but he still just has those two Lucky Dimes sitting there, as well as that Simba. And uh, he hasn't really been able to ramp up to the point yet where he can play those. That's true. I do think he's he is happy, though, with the board state. Um, these, are, these are tricky threats for Rachel to deal mm -hmm. with. We have another Rapunzel coming down here, healing. Rapunzel. Yes. Uh, and we're able to get a look side by side of the original art with the new art yes. and, um, <laughs> and see this new interpretation. Um, gosh, it's just a challenging uh, position for Rachel to be in here because what Steel Song really wants to do, in addition to this version being aggressive and getting lore early, um, which Rachel's managed to get a little bit of, um, is build up a base of singers which allow mm -hmm. you to make maximum use of the songs in your hand and play them yeah. efficiently. And uh, so even now, one of the outs for this deck is playing a whole new world and then using your characters to sing songs that you draw immediately afterwards. But Rachel just hasn't been able to get the characters uh, that she needs to stick around. Uh, both Rapunzel's can sing a few songs, yeah. um, but not those five-cost songs that you want to, you, you really want. Yeah, we haven't seen... Uh I know we, she does have a, a whole new world in her hand, but we haven't seen a character yet who could sing it. And you really want to be able to sing a card like that so that you still have all of your ink available to you in order to play another card. And we do say that Lucky Dime make an appearance over here on Steven's side of the board. It's, I mean, all the pieces falling into place here. We have uh, a couple high lore characters on the board. Um, healing that healing Cogsworth, Cogsworth there with a popsicle. Mm -hmm. So it'll stay around for a bit longer. Um, Rachel not able to challenge into it and remove them now. And gosh, what a, it's just a challenging position for Rachel right now. Um, Steven really in the driver's seat. Yep. Here's that Ursula singer. So Ursula is a two cost and singer four going into the inkwell because I think she just has some other cards that are maybe better value here. Like a shiny Robin Hood. I love <laughs> the Enchanted here. <laughs> I'm seeing all the, the beautiful cards on yes. the side of the board here. Um, Robin Hood is a great card. Uh, unfortunately, with three in the uh, strength line, it's it's not quite what you need to deal with what's on uh, Steven's side of the board. That Cogsworth with the resist is just so strong. Giving everything resist. So we, do, we are removing the Mickey Mouse. And... She's questing it here with the other Rapunzel. Just continuing to drive that lore total mm -hmm. a little bit. And that's how Rachel's going to win this game. Needs to get lore total high enough that Flutes uh, eventually, if Steven gets control of the board, is able to close out the game. And, and more importantly, it's also forcing Steven to spend resources to deal with Rachel's side of the board rather than advancing his own board state or his lore totals. So what do you think Steven is looking here at this, where the game is, the game state right now? Is he looking for a Mickey Mouse detective? <laughs> Because he's got one. Uh, mean, not a terrible card to play. I mean, Steven is in the driver's seat here. Steven's trying to, to prolong things, trying to uh, think. He is paying attention to Rachel's lore. Rachel does have six lore on the board. And so, and that's a lot. Seven, yeah. Seven. 
seven, seven, one, two, three, four. Oh, sorry, that she can quest oh, yes. with. I see what you're saying. Yeah, yes. sorry, quest with six. So, um, which is a lot. So we need to keep an eye on that. Um, but again, this game, if it goes long, is Stevens mm -hmm. to win, especially with the lucky dime on the board. So um, I think he's hoping to draw into uh, perhaps another aerial item collector, another high lore character that will make maximum use of that dime. Uh, but even so, Stevens happy to get like four lore turn in combination with the dime and another character, um, as long as he can keep Rachel from racing ahead of him. Yep, we see uh, Let the Storm Rage On, Lawrence. I can't see what else is in Rachel's hand here, but like you've talked about looking for your outs. What are, what are some of Rachel's outs here? Rachel doesn't have a oh, ton. Maybe uh, a whole new world. A whole new world <laughs> will help you find them. But she did have to use her ink uh, to... That's interesting because I believe Robin Hood could have sung A Whole New World, but she chose to use her ink instead. That is true. So Robin Hood will do two damage on the challenge. So if Rachel manages to draw into an Along Came Zeus, which one of the Rapunzels can sing, that'll mm -hmm. do four damage to the Tinkerbell, and then Robin Hood can finish it off. Ah. So that's something you know that, that she is trying to keep in mind. So Robin Hood is a great card to banish another character, because not only do you get to banish the character, mm -hmm. but Robin Hood will give you two lore uh, upon doing so. So this is another great combination that you like to see in these Steel Song decks is playing a whole new world followed immediately by a Be Prepared, which not only allows Rachel to pick out one of the most threatening bare cards. Bare necessities. I'm sorry, bare yes. necessities. <laughs> oh, <oof. laughs> bare necessities. Ah, there's that Along Came Zeus and you're saying. There's the Along Came Zeus, and now Robin Hood will be able to challenge into it. And so not only do we remove this card, but Robin Hood gains Rachel 2 lore uh, off that challenge. Um, so just a great combination here. You asked what the outs were. Mm -hmm. uh, the outs are, it turns out, a whole new world into a bare necessities, into a whole... Uh, Along came Zeus with a Robin Hood challenge. Yeah, it really was a whole new world there for Rachel on that turn. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. A new fantastic point of view. Absolutely. <laughs> so Stephen now, unfortunately, you know, when you hold new world to look for the answers, you also give your opponent a lot of answers. So Stephen, you know, perhaps found one of the high lore characters he wants to use for that dime. Yeah, he did get a Tomatoa. I, I saw in there. Um, he he had that second dime in hand before, so that did get put into the discard pile. But a lot more options here. That he has a uh, aerial. A treasure collector, so he's going to gain five here using Lucky Dime and gaining five off of Ariel when she comes down. And that's really the perfect card to draw into. Even the Tamatoa will require a few uh, more items to get up to that five lore total, so being able to gain five lore immediately with a dime is, is great. Yeah, and with that Ariel on board and not exerted, then because of that ward, which we talked about last time, Rachel's not really going to be able to have an answer for that Ariel, and so she's going to have to win this turn. I don't think there are any answers there. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, there is a double grab your swords line, which is available, except for Cogsworth giving Ariel okay, resist. resist one, which makes us grab your sword or makes grab your sword not as good. Mm -hmm. So as, as you point out, Stephen doesn't even need to quest with Ariel. Just wait for the dime and activate that again. Um, we have and an Ariel yeah. Spectacular Singer come down, so looking for some songs, which <laughs> there's only one, Let the Storm Rage On, it looks like, and uh, not <laughs> not probably the song that she wanted to see this turn. No, I, I, there's uh, unfortunately just not, not a lot of answers here. That Ariel with Word, that Word is, word is such a powerful ability. It really is, which... <laughs> I feel like I've talked to a lot of new players who don't quite understand how powerful Ward can be, but this is a great example of how that keyword just really can give you such an advantage when you have a card like Ariel that can quest for so much. And uh, yeah, uh, it's pretty incredible. Yeah. I mean, and the, the best Ward cards are ones like you know, Prince John, which give you some sort mm -hmm. of static ability just by being, being. there. Mm -hmm. And in this case, Ariel doesn't have a static ability. I mean, the one that gives her more lore. But that dime is basically saying yeah. five lore turn as yep. long as Ariel stays. As long as Ariel right. stays. Yeah. Yep. So um, that's, it's, this is a challenge. So Rachel, you know, playing your routes here, just trying to, to dig, see if there's anything that comes up that might be able to answer it. But passing the turn here and then we'll quest with the Ariel <laughs> for five lore and shake. Yeah. That's going to be the game. <laughs> yes. Well, Steven played that Sapphire Steel deck so well. I, I love.